Hey everyone, you're with Tesla Tom and thanks so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel. Today we're reviewing the Hyundai Ioniq 5. As a Tesla owner, I just want to quickly thank Hyundai Australia for providing us with this press car that we're going to review today. Alright, let's take a look at the car as we walk around. So there'll be two initial variants uh, on offer in Australia. There'll be the long range uh, two wheel drive or single motor for $71,900 and the long-range all-wheel drive or dual motor for $75,900. This car here is the all-wheel drive variant for $75,900 and one viewer of mine has said that the driveway price is about $81,000 in New South Wales. Whereas the Model 3 Long Range in Australia or in New South Wales is $73,400 and the Model Y Long Range is probably going to be about $80,000 so comparing like for like. The warranty of this car is five years unlimited kilometers, the battery is eight years 160,000 kilometers and the servicing schedule is every 15,000 kilometers or every 12 months whichever occurs sooner. Whereas the Model 3 long range uh, is four years 80,000 kilometer warranty whereas the battery is 192,000 kilometers. The range of this car or oh, the battery size is 72.6 kilowatt hours uh, the two-wheel drive or single motor variant will have a range of 451 kilometers, whereas the all-wheel drive variant, this car here, is 430 kilometers WLTP. That's actually fairly accurate. We did a uh, trip uh, on the weekend and uh, with a range test we worked out it was about 450 kilometers of real-world range. Whereas the Model 3 long range will be 82 kilowatt hours uh, with a WLTP of 614 kilometers, so slightly more for Model 3. Performance of this vehicle, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour for the rear-wheel drive variant in 7.4 seconds. This car here for dual motor is 5.2 seconds uh, with a maximum speed of 185 kilometers an hour. In terms of power, it will be 160 kilowatts for the single motor, 232 kilowatts for the dual motor variant. Whereas Model 3 long range is 4.4 seconds, so slightly faster, with a uh, torque of 250 kilowatts. Dimensions of this car, uh, in terms of its comparison with the Model 3, you can see the two cars side by side here. So the Ionic 5 compared to Model 3 is shorter, wider, but higher than Model 3. You can see that clearly in this shot here. Whereas compared to Model Y, it'll be shorter, slimmer, but lower than Model Y. So Model Y will be taller than this car. In terms of weight, the Ionic 5 is a heavier car than the Model 3, uh, and the all-wheel drive variant will be heavier than Model Y as well. Uh, this car here is 2,095 kilograms. Let's keep walking around the car now. Uh, compared to Model 3, it's a lot boxier. It's reminiscent of the 80s, I think, and uh, compared to the sporty look of Model 3 and Model Y. It kind of reminds me actually of the DeLorean, to be honest with you. Bit boxy, it's got the square headlights. It seems to have been designed for my micro generation, that sort of late 70s, early 80s, uh, children or teens of the 80s, uh, which is interesting. They call these lights here, these boxy lights, parametric pixel LED headlights. I'll uh, turn the lights on so you guys can see that. You might have heard the clunk of the frunk there. So the frunk can be opened uh, from a latch, like a traditional ice bonnet. And you've got to pull it up with a latch there, open up. That's what it looks like on the inside. Very small frunk. Comes with a uh, charging cable for the 10 amp socket and also a V2L adapter, which uh, I've already done a video on this, so make sure you check that out. That basically enables you to plug in a 10 and 15 amp plug into that and use the car uh, for appliances and things. So that is included with uh, uh, the Ionic 5. Unfortunately, not a very big frunk, uh, probably not much more use than just carrying your cables in the front there. And to close the frunk, just shut it like that. So the wheels are 20 inch. They've got Michelins on at the moment as OEMs. The, uh, the fenders look like, I guess, the iris of an eye. Someone has said to me, sort of, looks like it's sort of opening up. Having a look at the door handles now, they are flush with the car in the locked or closed position. As you can see, when it's unlocked, you just pull the latch to open the door like that. It's got quite a nice door closing sound. Like that, I quite like that. It's a nice solid feel. All right, let's have a look at the uh, boot just briefly. I'll show you more of the boot in a second, but it's got a powered tailgate, which is nice. And someone asked me whether you can set the height of the car's um, tailgate opening, you can. So you just hang on to that button there. Yep, so that uh, allows it to be set at that level. It's got a nice soft close as well. 
and the Ionic 5 badging across there, of course. The reverse lights are here, and the, the uh, tail lights are here across there. Let's have a look at the charging port. So you can open it like this by pushing the flap. It does go up like that. You can see the uh, battery indicator there, how much charge is left. CCS2, so type 2 up the top, and then the DC component here, like that, that's attached to the car. So in terms of charging, it's 11 kilowatt AC, 232 kilowatt DC, which is very fast. We managed to charge to 80% in 17 minutes, as advertised. At the website it says 80% in 18 minutes, so I was very impressed with that. I reached a top speed of 224 kilowatts at a 350 kilowatt charger, thanks to the 800 volt battery architecture of this car. Compare that to Model 3, which is also 11 kilowatt AC charging and 250 kilowatt DC, so very similar. You can customize charging times, and we'll review that further in the cabin. Okay, so the boot or trunk, whatever you call it around the world, has a 531 litre storage capacity. So there is a, uh, a blind here or a parcel shelf you can pull back to reveal more. There is also a subfloor below, which adds a little bit more to the storage. Not as big as I would have hoped. It's uh, actually got less storage room than Model 3 and much less than Model Y as well. There is a 12 volt plug on the left side here, which is very handy for camping trips and such. Our Model 3 doesn't have one of these, which would be nice, I think. Hopefully for future Teslas, they'll have a 12 volt uh, plug in the back. Okay, so welcome to the interior of the Hyundai Ionic 5. I've got to say, it's got a really lovely general feel and the space is very premium, very premium finish on the trims and the interior in general. I love the LED lights, probably can't see them as well in the daylight, but at nighttime looks fabulous with the purple lighting there, looks great. The cabin lighting is also very bright uh, with these switches up here. So well done Hyundai, uh, great interior. The, the trims are sustainable. Uh, a lot of it has been made from 100% recycled uh, paper or recycled uh, PET plastic bottles. Although the seating is leather, it's apparently been treated um, sustainably as well and the paint is uh, sustainable paint as well. I do like this flat floor. It's lovely because if uh, say for example your door is uh, obstructed by whatever you can actually just scooch across. I won't scooch today but you can scooch your legs right across uh, and get up from the other side and vice versa with a passenger as well. Now this is quite a fancy uh, thing. I quite like this. You can uh, turn your uh, both front passenger and driver's seat into a lazy boy like this. Watch this. So, say for example, you're charging, and you've got, say, 18 minutes to wait. You can uh, recline and put your feet up. See that? It's got calf support as well, which is quite nice. I'm uh, five foot nine, so it's just perfect for my height, really. I guess if you're a bit taller, your feet might reach the pedals, but yeah, it's lovely. And uh, you can easily bring it back like that. And you're good to go once you finish charging. Same works for the passenger side as well. You can also, um, I'll just grab the camera. You can do the same thing for your passenger with their buttons here on the side of the passenger seat. And so yeah, you can press that button there and let your passengers experience that too. You can also uh, adjust the, um, the back row or the second row with these buttons here in the 60-40 split. So you can probably see that seat moving there by pressing this button. So if you want to uh, reach your kids or push them further away, you can uh, use these buttons there from the driver's seat. Center console, you can actually adjust how far or close you want it to you, depending on where your arm wants to be. Which is quite nice, I like it about there. Uh, lots of cup holders, so two there. One in the underfloor bit there, center bit. One on the driver's side, one on the passenger side, and two in the rear as well. Lots of creature comforts. Let's kind of quickly test the horn. Someone asked me about that, so I might wind the window down so you can hear it. Okay, standard horn. There is a sunroof too, so the buttons are here. So you can open up like a theater curtain. The passengers can enjoy the view. And easy enough to close. Excellent. Okay, so let's quickly review the center screen, the infotainment screen. So a combination of buttons and screens to uh, please those who love buttons and please those who just love the screen. Uh, this is the center home screen that you get. You get like the temperature, which is quite nice, nice and big there. Get what media is playing, get the battery indication 
uh, 36 percent left with 137 kilometers of range and it tells you where you are as well this sort of nice blend of the screen into the map that's quite nice and the time of course as well and the screen is very responsive i've got to say uh, i've test driven a lot of evs and this is probably one of the most responsive screens you can slide right to have different menu options Let's start first with the uh, battery of the EV. So if you press EV, it tells you that you've got 137 kilometers left. If you turn the AC off, it gives you an extra 10 kilometers there and tells you also the nearest uh, charger as well, which is quite nice information there. And you can also set the departure time and also the charging times as well as the climate uh, when you want. So you can precondition the, the climate of the car before you come in in the morning. Let's have a look at the uh, map. So, um, it's probably not as nice looking as the Teslas, uh, that's all I'll say, it's you know functional enough I guess. And then you can also search for nearby stations as well, like that for charging. If you want the nav, you've got to press a separate button, and then you can uh, search by place, address, point of interest, um, places you've saved, and uh, dealerships, coordinates, cancel the route, so lots of options there for you to play with. And phone, of course, you can hook up your uh, Apple or Android phones. And of course, use Apple uh, CarPlay or Android Auto. Uh, there are a multitude of settings you can go through as well uh, for your vehicle. So uh, all the safety stuff you can uh, alter and customize to your heart's content. Um, we'll go through that a little in a second when I talk about the driving uh, aspect from the uh, drive instrument cluster. Um, you can adjust the uh, drive mode. Uh, eco vehicle, you can uh, set the deceleration or the uh, regeneration of the braking system. We can also do that here from the steering wheel, which I'll go through as well. So climate, you can actually adjust from the screen here, or you can adjust from the um, uh, more tactile buttons down here. So with the climate, if you, if you go from the screen here, you can uh, adjust uh, you know, what temperature you want it in the cabin. You can sync it or unsync it. Uh, you can have um, driver only. If you're the only occupant of the vehicle, you can set what level of auto if you don't want the fan too high. Now the front seats are ventilated, which is quite nice in Australia, especially in summer. So you can make your tush nice and cold and same for your passenger. Or uh, conversely in winter, you can also uh, have heated seats for all seats, not just the front as well. So that's quite a uh, nice creature comfort there. And heated steering wheel as well, which is quite nice for colder parts of Australia and around the world. And the rear heating, like I said, is just for heating, no ventilated seats. So let's have a look at the buttons down here quickly. So this is the climate setting in button form. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Whether you want air recirculated, you want the demisters on, how high you want the fans, and the uh, temperature in the cabin, of course. And then you've got buttons across here. So if you want the media on like that, push that on and off. If you want quick access to the map, you can do so that way. You can tune your uh, AM FM dial like that. You can put the cameras on for the screen. So uh, this is quite a nice feature, I've got to say, um, having these cameras available with the top-down view, which Tesla doesn't have. So that would be quite nice if Tesla had that. You can uh, choose to have the rear cameras. I think there are five cameras that I can see at least. Uh, two on the side, um, I think a couple at the front. Sorry, a couple in the back, one in the front. And you can do this. Uh, funky view there, see around your car, the conglomerates of all the cameras, and then some more customization of those cameras as well. Okay, so some of you may have seen a drive video I did with a point of view uh, GoPro camera um, when I did a drive on the M2 motorway. Um, have a look at that too, but in summary, it's quite a comfortable drive, I've got to say. Uh, very quiet cabin noise. Uh, you can hear the audio quite well. It's a very smooth drive. High driving position, obviously being in an SUV. Um, excellent suspension, I dare say, possibly even more comfortable than um, our Tesla Model 3. So well done, Hyundai. Very good drive indeed. Okay, so this is the instrument cluster of the Ionic 5. And um, I'll just get Joy to pan back quickly. You can probably see a few things here. These are buttons, physical buttons that you can change uh, on the steering wheel. So this changes the menu. So there are four main options. This one shows you uh, the drive with the little car there. This one shows you uh, information about the drive that you've been on in terms of efficiency, uh, how much you've driven, how long you've driven for. And then this is a compass. And that's uh, an indication of uh, the battery, what's happening 
uh, where the power is going to. Uh, it's a differential rear and front motor, and also tells you well, how much regeneration it's, uh, is happening as well when you when you slow down. And then on the steering wheel again, so that's cruise control there, and you can set how um, how far you are following the car ahead of you. Uh, that's for auto steer and lane keeping. Uh, I've got to say the lane keeping is probably a bit too sensitive. I like um, I like turning it off to be honest with you. This one's voice activation if you've got Apple CarPlay or Android Auto uh, activated. This one's for uh, media, uh, whether you want AM, FM. You can mute with this button here or change the volume up and down. This one changes your channels. Again, this is if you've got uh, the, your phone connected to your car. This button here is for drive mode, so it changes between uh, sport, normal or eco. It'll change the handling and how the uh, battery deals with the regen and the torque. Uh, this is um, attention level as well, so it monitors uh, apparently with AI how long you've been driving. Uh, there are paddles here on the side of the steering wheel, right there, so, and one here as well on the right. So that changes the level of regeneration. It's, uh, from, I found that it's on level 3 default. You can change it to iPedal. And I'll have a video on uh, iPedal handling, which is basically one pedal driving. And uh, back on the um, instrument cluster here, some more handy information. You've got auto hold. If you're at a traffic light, you can press the brake pedal quite hard and it will hold the car without you having to hold your foot there. Battery uh, indication, 36% left on this car. It's a graphical uh, indication there. Uh, what mode you're on. So if I change it to back to normal. Uh, temperature. Efficiency of the car, currently it's 17.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Range of the car, 137 kilometers left. The odometer at 2,888. Very lucky number there. I want to show you this on the side here. So this, apparently, Hyundai have made this like a, like a board where you can clip photos of your family and whatever you want to do, clip reminders here. Um, yeah, it's quite a nifty feature if you like that kind of thing. And of course, the standard um, in the, uh, stalks. So on the left stalk, you've got uh, wipers. I don't think there are any wipers at the back, actually. And then on the right-hand side, the right stalk is indicators on the right, and uh, lights as well, and fog lamps too. And then um, on the side there, pass on the driver's side, you've got uh, mirrors folding in and out, uh, adjust the mirrors, locking the car, including the charge port for V2L, and charger, and then the standard windows, uh, power windows, and child lock for windows too. Memory for uh, seat position, right there. And the sound system is Bose, and there are eight speakers around the car. And there are lots of USB ports around the car. There's two here in the um, center console. There's one there in the middle, with a 12 volt port as well, which is quite handy. There's two at the back as well. We'll go in the second row in a second. And down here, there's a wireless Qi charging pad. You can put your phone there to charge, which is quite handy. Quite a bit of room down here as well in the center console for storing other things, like maybe takeaway. And then um, here, there's a bit more room as well. You can open the, this little middle caddy. And as a quick note about the AC, uh, we have taken this for a drive on a very hot day. Uh, on a 30 degree day, 30 degree Celsius day, and uh, yeah, it, it actually uh, cools the cabin down quite nicely. So uh, yeah, very happy with the air conditioning. Okay, so on the Hyundai website, uh, there are quite a few safety features which I'll run through very quickly. Smart cruise control with machine learning. Uh, I've got to say this cruise control is quite good, keeps to the speed very well. With uh, adaptiveness, you can follow the car quite well as well in front of you. Uh, there's blind spot collision avoidance and view monitor. I'll just get Joy to quickly show the screen when you uh, change the indicator right and left see that it comes up so that makes it quite useful blind spot monitoring um, lots of uh, sensors for collision avoidance possibly a little bit too sensitive on the default settings i've got a couple of times the car has actually just stopped and i couldn't move anymore without uh, me maneuvering the car and uh, there was nothing there so possibly more uh, a bit too sensitive um, and there is something called driver attention warning, which is quite useful actually. If uh, for some reason you're distracted at a traffic light, if the car ahead of you is moving, it'll actually alert you. So I quite like that as well. Okay, so here I am in the second row of the Hyundai Ionic 5. I've got to say, it's a pretty enjoyable 
seating position right here. We're quite high up looking uh, in front of us there and the panoramic, panoramic uh, sunroof. And uh, we've had the kids in here and uh, yeah, they loved it. They loved it back here. So good family car. Uh, they particularly enjoyed the fact that you can raise these um, sunshades here. So on that very hot day we had, uh, they enjoyed the privacy there. And I think the rear windows are tinted as well, which is quite nice. Got the aircon vent here on the side. They love that too. And uh, the seat ventilation button as well, as well as power windows, of course, which you can lock from the front. And this little magazine bin rack thing reminds you of you being on a plane. A couple of USB ports for their devices. And then uh, another drink holder, I guess, a little caddy down here. Now I'm uh, five foot nine, like I said, and uh, I've got plenty of room back here. These seats are not all the way front either, so. I would say two fists, or almost two fists from my knee to the back of the front, uh, front passenger seat there. And in terms of headroom, again, 5'9". For me, plenty of room there between the uh, top of my head and the roof. Extra lights here as well. The cabin lighting is actually really bright. I quite enjoy it. As I said before, you can adjust the um, seats in the 60-40 split. You can actually um, have a bit of recline as well. So a tiny bit of recline for your passengers if you want. And using these controls here, you can move. I'm moving Joy ahead. Now moving myself. I've got the 60 split. And you can move that back as well. Just a bit more creature comforts for the Hyundai Ionic 5. And this uh, middle center console comes down to for extra drink holders. And armrest, of course. Just a few more things I want to talk about before I do a summary. Um, there are a few things in Australia that aren't available. Uh, so we don't get digital side mirrors uh, for our Ionic 5s here, just the standard mirrors. Um, no heat pump, uh, which would make the AC in the car more efficient. Uh, no solar roof, up to 205 watts uh, for the 12 volt battery. Um, no head-up display as well, for those of you who like that. No V2L internal, so a vehicle to load internal, only the external adapter as you saw. And uh, I couldn't get the summon working as well with the key fob, so I don't think that's available in Australia just yet. And unfortunately, no app either for the Ionic 5 at this stage. Apparently, Hay and I are promising that. We shall see. All right, guys, so here's the summary of the Hyundai Ionic 5. As a Tesla owner, there's a lot to love about the Ionic 5. Hyundai really have stepped up their game uh, compared to previous iterations of Ionic. Uh, it's a genuine attempt to create a ground up electric vehicle, so they've got to be applauded for that. It's unique exterior styling uh, appeals to my generation, I think, maybe children or teens of the 80s. Uh, certainly head turning when I drive around our neighborhood. Possibly could have had more storage with a bigger frunk. Uh, I love the interior, premium finish, sustainable materials, I love that. Excellent drive quality, comfortable around city roads and highways, handles really well for a, a heavy car. Passengers, my children are very happy with the uh, second row. Lots of little luxuries uh, like ventilated seats, shades for rear passengers, panoramic sunroof, and responsive touchscreen, which I love as the driver, and customizable charging times and other safety features, which I love as well. However, for this price, like for like, it's actually more expensive than the long range Tesla Model 3 and actually has less range as well. When the Model Y eventually drops, it'll certainly be in direct competition in terms of the size of the car and also the pricing as well. So in conclusion, I think the Hyundai Ionic 5 is a genuine electric vehicle as a competitor to the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. If you're looking for a family size SUV and uh, if you're looking at Model Y already, I certainly would recommend also looking at the Hyundai Ionic 5 as a genuine alternative to a Tesla. I want to once again thank Hyundai Australia for loaning me their press car for the week. It's certainly been an enjoyable ride and I've had fun reviewing this car. If you've got any other questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, happy charging. On this side here, that's voice activation if you've got Apple Auto, Apple. This one's voice activation if you've got Apple Android this one's voice activation if you've got Apple CarPlay or... or uh. So in conclusion, I think the Hyundai... How do I finish that?